Hi, welcome or welcome back to Lost in Thought. My name is Jen and today I'd like to show you this. Here we go. And this is a facsimile, a copy of one of nine pocket sundials that was found upon the board of the wreckage of the Mary Rose. And too long didn't read version, uh, Mary Rose was King Henry VIII's flagship ship that sank in 1545. And like I said, this was one of nine that was found on board. So let's get into it, because I think it's quite a nifty piece of kit. Beginning with the outside, the original would have been turned from boxwood. And this has got a really good effect. That means the lid and the top would eventually have changed dimension slightly. So they could have been twisted together, uh, producing a cab effect. I don't believe this one is turned from boxwood. I'm not entirely sure what it is made from. And it sort of reminds me of a, a checkers piece or a drafts piece. Uh, it's made in two halves and around the bottom there is a, a copper alloy bit of snazzy decoration there. And on the bottom that is the attachment and you'll see what for in a second. So if I just open it up, so it just uh, pulls apart. Oh, there we go. Now, uh, this is where mine slightly starts to differ a bit more. The original mirror inside would be made from a silver, uh, silver backing. This is a clearly a modern mirror. There's a hello. <laughs> um, there's less polishing involved with looking after modern mirrors. So I think that's the reason that the person who made this used a modern mirror, but the original by now would have been incredibly tarnished. Uh, this is the bottom bit, the actual sundial part. Now, here originally, there would have been a compass and on mine, just like the original, it has broken uh, mine's either second or third hand. I quite like the fact that um, both the reproduction and the original has broken in pretty much the identical same way. This here is the gnomon, and the gnomon is what gives the shadow to tell the time. And it very cleverly it folds down so when you pop the lid back on it's not going to get squished and it's held on through those slits in the bottom there and when i lift it up let's go by the hand when i lift it up there we go if i just get my torch second i can move it around and you can see the shadow forming now, even though it's June, I live in England and it is very, very cloudy today. However, I did test this out on a few previous days. And I'll pop the images in now and it works quite well. However, I live a couple of hundred miles north of the south coast and it is slightly out. The originals were made in Nuremberg in what's now Germany and the gnomon and the time is set for for that latitude. And that's the really important thing with sundials. It has to be made for your local area as such. And so even if I am facing due north, it doesn't quite tell the time accurately. So I would have to turn slightly off to one side for an accurate time. The, if I just fold that down a second, let me hold it closer. The numbers are the Arabic numerals. So they should be recognisable to most people. I love how the number four is pretty much like a, a squiggly cross. And it's just decorated really lovely. It's just a really nice little piece of kit. And you can fully well imagine a Tudor sailor or a Tudor traveller taking this out and showing their friends and sort of showing off with it, saying, oh, I've got the latest gadget. 
obviously, if you're incredibly wealthy, if you're incredibly rich, if you're in the nobility, then things like mechanical clocks, wearable clocks, um, they existed. They were hideously, um, hideously not very accurate at all. However, these are a fantastic way of being able to tell the time whilst on the move. Most villages, most towns would have had a clock tower in their church. There we go, just snaps together. And now it's nice and safe inside its own little case. If you've enjoyed this video, please kindly like, comment, and more importantly, hit that subscribe button. But thank you ever so much for joining me and goodbye for now.